When I've been talking about the, the uh, Talk Work Centre in the past, I've referred a number of times to this concept of degrees of freedom. And uh, in particular with this machine, I've said there's been, there, it has six degrees of freedom. Now, for those who have done engineering before, it's a, it's a pretty uh, straightforward concept. And uh, a lot of others have probably come across this in the past as well. But just wanted to demonstrate uh, practically on this machine uh, what I'm actually referring to and with the aid of, in this case, a, a drill that I've attached using the, uh, the drill uh, bit attachment. Now the first uh, three degrees of freedom uh, are pretty common, pretty um, common sense here, the X, Y and Z axes. And so in this case, and I, on this machine I can lock each of the axes individually uh, and separate to each other. So if I unlock the X axis, the machine can transverse back and forth carrying the tool with it obviously. That axis can be locked with a brake there. The second being the Y axis and the carriage can actually travel up and down the beam. And if you so choose you can obviously unlock both the X and the Y and have them both moving together if you uh, had, a, had a problem to. And quite often when you're doing a surfacing operation that's uh, quite, quite a common thing to do. But uh, I kind of find that I like having the ability to lock one axis and just use the other one uh, for the majority of the movements. And then move the, say, the, the tool along the Y axis, lock that off and then do the X axis passes again. So that's X and Y. The third one is the Z axis and in this case that's the vertical plunge. Now on this machine we've both got the, uh, the plunge itself for the tool but I can also adjust the height and if I just come around this side, I can actually wind the entire beam up and down. So that's our first three, and each one of those can be used either in conjunction with the others or, or each one independently. Now that's three. The other three are, in this case, rotation. And we can rotate the tool around each of those axes again. So to rotate the tool around the x-axis, if I loosen off the carriage here, I'll make sure everything else is locked, I can rotate the tool through plus to minus 45 degrees. And I'll just lock that one off again. And just on the upright here, I've got a, uh, a gauge showing me plus to minus 45 degrees, although if I was going to do this uh, with any sort of degree of accuracy, I'd probably bring in one of those Wixi uh, digital uh, angle gauges to give me a much, much better, um, you know, precise setup. So that's the x-axis. To rotate around the y-axis, there's a brake over here. And again, I can just loosen that off. And then the entire beam assembly can be rotated. In this case, you can actually rotate it right round so the tool's actually operating horizontally and you can then do horizontal plunge cuts or if you uh, had a router mounted you could be doing uh, mortising or something like that planing attachments or set it up as a, uh, a little jointer uh, there's a number of things you can do obviously with the uh, machine operating horizontally so let's bring that back up to zero Out there. And the last one being rotation around the Z axis. Now in this case, as you would have noticed, I've actually dropped the end support arm away. Um, it's obviously not needed to be done for all these other movements that I was doing, but for this last one, it was easier for me to get it out of the way in the first place. Now there's two things. I've got a brake down here, and there's also a lock pin. And this gives us the ability to rotate the entire assembly through 360 degrees and there are preset um, stops for this pin at 15 degrees over I think it's about plus to minus 45 again but obviously you can set it anywhere you like including setting it right out the other side if you uh, wanted to work with a, a large uh, um, you know roll something actually in and then work with the arm over the top of it let's drop that pin back in there at zero. 
So this machine's got six degrees of freedom. There are three axial movements and three rotational movements. In some ways it's actually got seven degrees of freedom, but two of them are actually working on the Z-axis, so uh, I haven't been counting it in that respect.